In this figure, we want to look at blood's O2 capacity. In other words, how much oxygen can it carry per unit volume of blood? This is indicated by our y-axis over here, the O2 concentration, the mils of O2 per unit volume of blood. Now, that's essential that we have hemoglobin increasing that carrying capacity, as plasma alone would not carry enough oxygen for us to remain aerobic. We've already looked at hemoglobin's characteristics individually. In other words, hemoglobin uh, subunit cooperativity, where interaction between the subunits gives us this sigmoid shape to its curve and this dramatic unloading at the tissue PO2s. We've also looked at changes in hemoglobin affinity that occur at the local environment due to things like increases in hydrogen ion concentration or carbon dioxide. This also enhances unloading. Now what we want to do is look at how much oxygen is actually being carried because that's not necessarily a constant over time. Now if we look at normal blood in the middle here, if we fully saturate that blood, we'll reach 100% saturation and that occurs at our alveolar PO2 of about 100. Now, that blood has a normal concentration of hemoglobin that would allow it to carry 20 mils of O2 per 100 mils of blood. If we bring it down to a PO2 of about 30, assume a tissue that has a PO2 of about 30, we're going to see some desaturation, some unloading of oxygen, and we would fall from 20 down to about 15 right? 15 mils of O2 per 100 mil of blood. Now that means we've unloaded 5 mils of O2 per 100 mils of blood passing through that tissue. Okay, that's great. We are helping to keep our tissues aerobic by delivering some fraction of what's being carried. Again, that's not necessarily fixed. If we were to become anemic, if we were to decrease our red blood cell count or the amount of uh, hemoglobin in those cells, Hemoglobin is normally expressed to the tune of about a couple hundred million copies per red blood cell. If that falls, we end up with anemia, which is a reduced carrying capacity for oxygen. We just have fewer binding sites per unit volume of blood. We fully saturate those binding sites at the lungs, but then when we go to the tissues and desaturate by that same fraction, about a quarter at this PO2 in the tissues, we would fall from our saturated state, which is no longer 20, it's fallen from 20 down to about 13 now. And we would desaturate from 13 down to 10 here as we hit our curve. Well, that's now delivering the same fraction, but only three mils of O2 per 100 mil of blood, right? We've actually, because we've reduced our carrying capacity, we would actually unload less oxygen. Now that could be enhanced by those factors we mentioned before, like an increase in hydrogen ion concentration or a decrease in PO2 if we were to shift farther left here. Right? We may have to do those things for this anemic person to maintain O2 delivery to their tissues that's sufficient for aerobic respiration. Now, note we can also go in the other direction. We could increase the expression of hemoglobin and or red blood cells right? in response to the hormone erythropoietin, for instance. That would increase the number of binding sites per unit blood volume. We're now up to 28 from our original 20. We would unload to that same degree as we've seen in all the other curves, right? In this case, we'd fall from 28 down to about 21. And note, now we are delivering seven mils of O2 per uh, 100 mils of blood, enhancing our oxygen delivery. Now, it might sound like going to a higher hematocrit and increased carrying capacity is a great thing. And it can be, however, there are downsides. High hematocrit can lead to increased viscosity of blood, which can create cardiovascular problems due to this increased viscosity that goes along with it. And so our normal uh, meets aerobic needs, yet does not create these cardiovascular problems of a high hematocrit. 